All right, Shalom, which means peace. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, whom the world ignorantly calls God, Bahashem in the name, Yahweh Shai, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus, Bahashem in the name, Rakah Spirit, Kodash Holy. All right, so Bahashem is in the name in the Paleo Hebrew, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai are the names of the one they ignorantly call God and Jesus in the Paleo Hebrew. All right, I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yahshua Allah, which is Israel. All right, and a sincere salutation to all you Akim, which is brothers who are listening and believing and laboring in this truth. All right, and to the Aquath who are believing this truth and all truth in his sincerity. All right, this is Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1. And it reads, Now the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field, which Yahweh by Shemiah Shai had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath the Most High said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, the Most High hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For the Most High doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now, the reason I started off with this chapter and these verses right, is because I want to go into a lesson on theophysy. All right. And for those who don't know, all right, we're going to go into it. But I want to point out how this all goes back to the garden. All right. When you deal with the trees in the garden. All right. Those were uh, knowledge. All right. The fruit of that tree was knowledge. OK, so trees uh, are sometimes likened unto nations of people. All right. In the scriptures and that fruit that Eve ate of. All right. Was was knowledge. That's why the serpent said ye shall know good and evil and you shall be as gods. Now, the doctrine. All right. Or philosophy of theosophy. All right. We're going to get it. So let's just go straight to here. And I'll go to, let's get the uh, etymology. All right, so let's start off with that, of theophysy. All right, because I know theos goes into God. All right, so let's go here. All right, it says, knowledge of divine things obtained through mystic study. All right, from late Greek, theos theosophia. Wisdom concerning God or things divine. From Greek, Theosophos, one wise about God. From Theos, meaning God, all right, um, forming words for religious concepts. Sophia, skill, knowledge of acquaintance with philosophy. From Sophos, wise, learned. All right, so uh, theosophy is the belief all right because when you deal with it it's not the actual knowledge of the heavenly father all right it's the idea that you can obtain godhood through all of these mystic practices all right and a lot of what you see in this day and age all right the root of it the rudiments all right because when you go into the scriptures that talk about the rudiments of the world all right the rudiments is the foundation all right so let's go into this all right this is Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Hamashiach. So the rudiments of this world, the foundation of this world's belief system is that you can obtain godhood, all right, through these different practices, all right, through technology, all right, but you can ultimately uh, surpass the heavenly father all right that's the mentality of this this world that we live in and everyone participates in this world concerning uh the the majority of people on the planet they participate in some way shape form or fashion all right some of them are heavily into it when you deal with the masonic lodges all right when you deal with um the uh biometrics all of these things are the ability the idea of integrating technology or some kind of mystic knowledge to put yourself on the level of god all right now when you go into this word rudiments all right it's the greek word 
You know what? I'll just have him say it. Strong's G, 4747. Stoichion. Stoichion. All right, and it says, any first thing from which the others belonging to some series or composite whole take their rise and element. First principle. All right, now when you jump down, it says this. Strong's definition says, something orderly in arrangement. An example, a serial, basal, fundamental, initial, constituent, proposition, element, principle, rudiment. All right, so the foundation of this world, all right, the foundation of the beliefs of this world, all right, live in theosophy in some way, shape, form, or fashion, all right? Now, another one of the definitions is, in part D, it says the elements, rudiments, primary and fundamental principles of any art, science, or discipline. So the fundamental philosophy of this world is theosophy, all right, and we got the definition of it. We got the etymology of it, all right? Knowledge of divine things obtained through mystic study, all right? But when you look at the actual belief system of theosophy, all right, it goes a little deeper, all right? So let's, let's go to Google and we'll just do the basic understanding of theosophy, all right? So it says, any number of philosophies, you know what, I'll click it to make it bigger. It says, any of a number of philosophies maintaining that a knowledge of God may be achieved through spiritual ecstasy, direct intuition, or special individual relations, especially the movement founded in 1875 as a Theosophical Society by Helena Blavatsky. All right, and Henry Steele Olcott. So when you deal with uh, theo theosophy, all right, it's really the knowledge. Well, at face value, it's the knowledge of divine. All right, but when you really go into it, all right, it's the idea of being um, above God, all right, through these different practices. And this is why Esau has taken the same um, mysticism of the ancient world, all right, because before the Greeks and the Romans had it, the Egyptians had it, all right, and before them, the Sumerians had it. All right, and all of these uh, philosophies have been passed down and given different titles, but it's the same rudiments. It's the same foundational belief that you can be as God. You can put yourself on the level of God. All right, you can be above God. All right, and this is the mindset that Esau holds uh, fast to. So this is the foundation of his idea ideology, and that's why he's on a fast track to uh, merging humanity with technology. All right. And he's going to use that as a deception because it's going to give the individual the idea that they can be as God through hooking Google up to their brain. But really, they're just logging themselves into a database for those who really desire to be God to be able to search out everything and track everyone and see everyone. And this all goes back to the same fundamental ideology. All right. So let's go to Helena Blavatsky. All right. Because I want to deal with her and her belief system. All right. So when you go into her uh, Wikipedia and you just go into theories and doctrines. All right. I just want to get to the point. All right. It says Blavatsky was the leading theo theoretician of the Theosophical Society responsible for establishing its doctrinal basis. The ideas expounded in her published text provide the basis from which the society and wider theosophical movement emerged. Blavatsky's theosophical ideas were a form of occultism. She subscribed to the anti-Christian current of thought within Western esotericism, which emphasized the idea of an ancient and universal occult science that should be revived. Now you have to keep in mind, I want, to, I want you to continue to keep in mind that these philosophies have been passed down. When they say ancient wisdom, when they say mystic wisdom, they're talking about the things that on the left hand side Ham was into, all right, before Esau uh, rose to, um, to power. All right, they've recycled these same ideologies. All right, this is why they deal with these certain rituals and practices. It's the idea that they can get around the order that the Heavenly Father has set up and they can become as gods themselves. When you look at the scriptures, the Lord called his nation of people gods. All right. But you have these other nations who have tried to tap into the left hand energy 
to circumvent or get around that order that the Lord has set up. All right. And Esau is no different. All right. This is Psalm chapter 82 and verse one, a Psalm of Asaph. The most high standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. All right. Verse six reads, I have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O power, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. And see, when you go into uh, the 83rd chapter, they wanted to break the yoke. All right. They wanted to loose themselves from that order that the Lord has set up. All right. And going back to Ham, they've always used these mystical, um, idolatrous, left handed, abominable works to try to upgrade themselves, so to speak. And Esau's doing the same thing, except he's merging himself with technology or attempting to. All right. But it's the same ideology of trying to be as God. All right. So I want to go back to this and then we'll get more scriptures. All right. So continuing. All right. It says Blavatsky stated that the theosophical teachings were passed on to her by adepts who lived in various parts of the world. All right. And when you look up this word adept, it is experts. All right. So continue. It says fundamentally, the underlying concept behind Blavatsky's theosophy was that there was an ancient wisdom religion which had once been found across the world and which was known to various ancient figures, such as the Greek play, uh, philosopher Plato and the ancient Hindu sages. Blavatsky connected this ancient wisdom religion to hermetic philosoph philosophy, a worldview in which everything in the universe is identified as an emanation from a godhead. Blavatsky believed that all of the world's religions develop from this original global faith. Blavatsky understood her theosophy to be the heir to the Neoplatonist philosophers of late antiquity, who had also embraced hermetic philosophy. Blavatsky claimed that due to Christianization in Europe, this magic tradition was lost there, but it persists, persisted in modified form in India and Africa. Why is that? Because all of this, uh, this ideology goes back to the garden. It's just been passed down. And that's why I started off with Genesis, the third chapter, to really highlight the point that this so-called ancient wisdom religion goes back to the garden. There's always been a left hand and a right hand. All right. Good and evil. And this is why the serpent told a woman, if you ate this fruit, you would know of good and evil and you would be as gods. Because at that time, Eve only knew good. All right. Continuing. It says promoting a self-consciously magical disenchantment narrative. In turn, Blavatsky believed that the theosophical movement's revival of the ancient wisdom religion would lead to its spreading across the world, eclipsing the established world religions. Thus, in bringing these theosophical ideas to humanity, Blavatsky viewed herself as a messianic figure. So what you're seeing is... The society that we're in right now is moving and pushing people towards an ideology. All right. It's moving people towards an ideology. This is why they demonize the scriptures. This is why they demonize the other so-called religions. All right. Because there's a, a gradualism that's being implemented in this world today to move everybody to this thought process. This is why they're pushing this idea of merging man with technology. So you can be as gods. This is why they're creating the metaverse so people can, um, in a digital world, be as a god. All right. And, and that reminds me of 2 Timothy, the third chapter. Verse 1 reads, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. All right. And verse two, the point is that men shall become lovers of their own selves. And how? Because Esau gives them the platforms and the vehicles to become their own God and idol. All right. And this all goes back to a common ideology. All right. On the left hand. And in this day and age, it's known as theosophy. OK. Now. I want to go here. Because I want to get one more point.
All right, here we go. It says Blavatsky expounded what has been described as a monotheistic, eminentist, and mystical cosmology. Blavatsky was a pantheist. All right, and what, do you, what is a pantheist? All right, it's the belief that reality is identical with divinity. All right. Let me see if I can find a simpler way to describe this. All right, pantheism, a doctrine which identifies God with the universe or regards the universe as a manifestation of God. All right, now, the scripture has said that the Lord created the earth and the world for his pleasure and the universe for his pleasure. All right, but there's a certain order that's attached to the, the world that we live in today. All right, and a lot of these doctrines, they will acknowledge that there's a higher power, but they rebel against the order that's set up. All right, as James said, the devils do know, all right, and tremble. All right, as a matter of fact, let's go to that. All right, this is James 2 and 19. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. So even Blavatsky can recognize that there's a universal uh, a power, an ultimate source of life. But the ideology is to resist that, that order that's been set up. And this is why when you look at her belief system, it's anti, she says anti-Christian. And really that's just anti-scriptures. You know, you have to uh, remember that the Luciferians and the so-called Illuminati believe that the serpent was correct. All right. That the woman and the serpent, that uh, tag team was the right ones in the story. And the most high is evil. And that the serpent really just opened uh, Eve's mind to uh, greater understanding. When all he did was introduce her into wickedness and through her, we all die because of that. All right. Because, again, the wages of sin is death. But even in this day and age, that same rebellion has been recycled, all right, given a new name, rebranded, and pushed out to the masses. As it was in the ancient world, all right, there's no new thing under the sun. All right, now continuing here, because it did say she, she it mentioned her being a pantheist. But I want to pick back up where we left off. All right, so I'm going to jump down. We're going to continue here. It says, Blavatsky was a pantheist and emphasized the idea of an impersonal divinity, referring to the theosophical power as a universal divine principle, the root of all from which all proceeds and within which all shall be absorbed at the end of the great cycle of being. She was dismissive of the Christian idea of God in the Western world describing it as a bundle of contradictions and lot and a logical impossibility all right so again this goes back to the same rebellion she stated that the universe emanated from this divine principle with each partic particle of matter being infused with a spark of the divine lower orders emanated from higher ones before becoming increasingly dense and absorbed back into the divine principle all right but that's the point that, that's the point concerning her uh, belief system. All right. And you see the, the belief system that she shared going back into the ancient world. And you see it present very uh, subtly. All right. In this present world. All right. In this world, even with the cartoons, they make evil look good and good look evil. All right. And this is why the Lord is going to come back with fierce anger. All right. Because there's the same push. All right for rebellion all right and it's been given a new name but it's the same wickedness on the left hand side all right now let's get a little more of this all right it says blavatsky advocated the idea of root races each of which was divided into uh, seven sub races in blavatsky's cosmogony the first root race were created from pure spirit and lived on a continent known as the imperishable sacred land all right well this is yeah, there's no need for the rest of this. All right, and I, I, I'll go into another lesson dealing with her thoughts on race. But I just want to deal with the subject of theophysy, all right, in its general form. All right, so continuing. Because again, really, this, just, this is just knowledge of wickedness. All right, it's not really wisdom. 
All right. And that's the deception that Eve received and that our people receive unto this day, that the knowledge of wickedness is wisdom and it's not. All right. It's Ecclesiastes chapter 19 and 22. The knowledge of wickedness is not wisdom. Neither at any time the counsel of sinners, prudence. All right. And theophacy is a counsel of sinners. All right. When you deal with the hermetical of um, the hermetical philosophy is, is going into the counsel of sinners. All right. Rebellion. Which is the sin is witchcraft. All right. And Esau has created a doctrine where people go around and they read horoscopes and they check their uh, signs and they, they they check their zodiacs and they celebrate these different um, idolatrous holidays. Being willfully ignorant to the fact that all of this goes back to the worship of deities of the ancient world, which were no gods. That the same mindset of rebellion in the ancient world is present today with Esau at the head of it, who believes he can be as God, if not God, through technology. All right, so going back to this. All right, so we've covered a lot of this information. But there was a few more points I want to see if I can find. All right, let's go to beliefs and teachings of, of theophacy. And we're just going to hit some of the points. All right, central to theoph theosophical belief is the idea that a group of spiritual adepts known as the masters not only exist, but were responsible for the production of early theosophical texts. For most theos theosophists, these masters are deemed to be the real founders of the modern theosophical movement. In theosophical literature, these masters are also referred to as Mahatmas, adepts, masters of wisdom, masters of compassion, and elder brothers. They are perceived to be a fraternity of human men who are highly involved, evolved, both in terms of having an advanced moral development and intellectual attainment. All right, and this is all uh, fluff, all right? This, this is why the scriptures talk about, matter of fact, because the, the real illuminated ones, the real uh, masters, if you will, all right, is he howled by Shema Shah and he elect underneath them. But everything has been turned upside down because when you deal with the theo theosophists, all right, they don't believe that Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are the, uh, the, the chosen race above all nations of people. All right, they, they actually rebel against that order. And they believe that through these different practices, they can be as God. They can be on the level of Godhood. All right. This is Isaiah 29 and 16. And it reads, surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not. Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding. All right. And these different mystery religions, as they are called, all right, really go back to rebellion against the Lord's order. All right, it really goes back to turning things upside down because they'll demonize the scriptures as if it's outdated and it's um, unbelievable, as they put it. But then they'll give you this uh, this so-called knowledge and it's nothing but understanding of wickedness. All right. Now, let's get some of the the, the far out things that they say. All right. Since we're crazy. All right, here it is. The masters are believed to preserve the world's ancient spiritual knowledge and to represent a great white brotherhood or white lodge, which watches over humanity and guides its evolution. And this is why they believe that they're justified to do a, um, a depopulation of the planet. This shows you the difference between the left hand and the right hand, and it should it should get you upset, man. All right. Ultimately, the Lord is in control. But when you see the pride of Esau Edom, man, it's apparent. And when I was looking this up and I found out about this, this doctrine, I knew about Blavatsky and, and the, the so-called Illuminati. But when you go into this mystery, so-called mystery religion and this philosophy, it's really just Edomite supremacy, man. Wrapped up as wisdom. Packaged as wisdom, as the light of the world. Come on, man. 
And Lord willing, I'll be able to put these articles in in the uh, description. If I forget, you can remind me. And Lord's will, I can put it in there. I'm going to read this again. It says the masters are believed to preserve the world's ancient spiritual knowledge and to represent a great white brotherhood or white lodge, which watches over humanity and guides its evolution. All right. Among those whom the early the theophysists claimed as masters were biblical figures. So they this is the same thing that they did with the scriptures. They whitewashed everything. So now Abraham, Moses, Solomon, Yahweh Shai, all of the leaders of all of the different nations are part of this white brotherhood. Come on, man. All right, it says, according to the theosophical belief, the masters approach those deemed worthy to embark on an apprenticeship or cellaship. The apprentice would then undergo several years of probation during which they must live a life of physical purity, remaining chaste, abstinent and indifferent to physical luxury. Levatsky encouraged the production of images of the masters. The most important portraits of the masters to be produced were in 1884 by Herman Scheiman. According to the scholar, according to scholar of religion, Massimo Introvine, Scheiman's image of Moria and Kut gained semi canonical status in the theosophical community being regarded as sacred objects rather than simply decorative images. All right, man, this is the same folly. All right. When you really break it down, it's the same rebellion from the ancient world. All right, man, I, I'm, I'm curious as to this image. All right, and these are the paintings. These are the paintings of the, the so-called masters. They, eat, they paint them as Edomites, man. All right? Now, we know ultimately through the spirit, this is a, a, a no religion, all right? And it's really just rebellion. But it shows you the pride of Esau, all right? That they believe that they're justified to rule the world in wickedness. And it's through these, uh, these belief systems, all right? That's why the scriptures say this in 2 Thessalonians. This is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that, when I was yet with you, I told you these things. All right, because again, they'll paint it like this is innocent, that you got to be pure, you got to be chaste. All right, but when you really dig into their uh, ideology, all right, it's, it goes back into the same folly the Hamites were into, the same wickedness, the same rebellion. All right, and it's the same ideology that Yahweh Shemal Shai doesn't have any understanding. Like it says in um, Isaiah 29 chapter, the thing framed, say to him who framed it, uh, what has thou done? Roughly paraphrasing. And this is why Esau's on this race to become um, an elite or as God through technology. Because they've tried it through all of the mystery um, rituals of the Hamites. The disgusting and abominable acts of the, uh, of the Hamites. Going back to Egypt, going back to Canaan. And now they're going to try to use uh, technology. To circumvent the fact that the Lord made them the basis of men. And many of our people are going to be seduced by this so-called uh, wisdom. Just like Eve was seduced in the garden. Alright, and it shows you that this, this all goes back to the same thing, man. Alright, so Lord willing, this was edifying with that. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rekakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yashar Allah. And a sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.